welcome and thank you so much for taking some time out this morning to talk about the lessons you may have learned about Flipgrid, using it with your students, and also any questions and answers um, that we all might have for each other. My name's Ann Oro, and I work at the Archdiocese Center as the assistant superintendent for the Union County Elementary Schools. And also I support all the teachers in all the schools in the instructional use of technology. So what I'm gonna ask us all to do is just begin in prayer with the Hail Mary. We're just going to hold in our hearts any intentions that we have for the health of our community, for peace and for justice around the world. And we'll bless ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou okay. among and women, women, and blessed, and blessed is, the fruit is the fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother of God, pray for pray us for sinners, sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trish, you've definitely used it six to eight. And so I'm going to ask you a little bit about that. Was that mostly with Spanish or mostly with technology? Actually, both. Um, I actually started using it um, maybe like years before remote learning, maybe two years or so, whenever we were introduced to it at one of your workshops. And I thought this would be a great thing for my Spanish classes. Um, I usually, every week I have them do a little report on, it's called fin de semana, what you did over the weekend. And instead of writing in and standing up and presenting it in front of the class, I had them start recording it in Flipgrid. So it was a really easy transition for me when we started remote learning. I learned, I used it a lot in remote learning. If I continued that with Spanish and other things with Spanish, but especially um, with remote learning, I came up with like little topics each week. Um, like record a short video on how to stay safe during the pandemic or record a short video on. And then at the end, I had this, at both of my schools, I had the seventh graders record short messages to the eighth graders, you know, wishing them luck and, you know, whatever. And um, so I, I love it. I think it's great. That's fantastic. And so when we're getting to um, doing a little sharing, I don't know if you feel comfortable. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Because, you know, that's one of the things most of the people here are just here to learn. And the high school teachers use it a lot as well, because it's a great tool for explaining things. And it's also a fantastic tool for anything visual. If you are, um, you know, if you have an art class, if you have a gym class, if you have, uh, you know, music class, it's a great way to allow students to share visually. The other nice thing about Flipgrid is it is a tool that works on so many different platforms. So you can use it with a laptop, you could use it with a Chromebook, you could use it with an iPad or a cell phone. So it's really a very accessible tool. Since most of you haven't used it at all, I think maybe it would be a great experience for everybody to just give it a try, okay? So um, what I did this morning, is I created a really quick little flip grid and it doesn't need any sign on information. So you can, if you're going to be on a cell phone or an iPad, you have to put the flip grid app on your computer. I believe you might be able to use Safari or Chrome and do that. When you use flip grid, it is a video tool, so it will ask you to. Um, it'll ask you to use your computer or your cell phone's video and um, audio, so your microphone and your webcam. But what I ask you to do is to give this a try. Now with students, you would password protect it. You might have them sign on with their Google ID or their Microsoft ID. So you're seeing this as a very open tool right now because I purposely did this with a link for educators. So you're gonna to go to flipgrid.com slash 
lowercase b, 412, lowercase a, e, 85. So I don't think I have anybody on a phone right now. So you should all be able to see this. And I want you to just add, what's one way you help students keep their faith and embrace our Catholic identity during online learning? I gave you a limit of a minute and 30 seconds to respond, and I'll show you that that can be made much, much shorter or much longer. And the nice thing is this is a free tool. And so if you've never used this before, just if you're struggling a little bit when you get there, this is the screen you'll see. And then you'll see this big green plus. So when you click on the big green plus, It'll ask you to record this grid using your email. So I didn't realize it was going to do that. So you can log on with Google or log on with Microsoft. So I'm choosing my ID. And now here it's asking me allow the microphone and camera. So I'll allow that. And it might be a little bit slow because I'm doing Zoom as well as doing this. There's some tools at the bottom. I'm going to click the little video camera. It'll count down. It'll let me record my response about how I used Flipgrid to share faith in Catholic identity. When I think I've got it, I can click next or I can pause while it's recording to gather my thoughts. Click the little camera again to continue. You could also, which the kids like, add um, different stickers and draw on the screen. It's really going slow, so I'm just going to continue on to next. It lets me review it. If I like it, I could add more. Then it asks for a picture that gets added. And again, you could add emojis or writing or whatever. Click Next. And then it asks for the display name. You can type a title if you want. Add a link if you wanted them to go someplace else and submit the video. It gives me a direct link to my video if I wanted to submit that in um, Google Classroom or through email or something. You could download the video, download the selfie and say complete. And so I see Janice added something already and here's mine. And the nice thing about this is it gives the students the ability to hear each other's thoughts. You can, um, you can moderate the videos before they're seen. And I'm going to give you a couple more minutes. I'm getting a message. I have to unmute in order to record. Okay, so go ahead and unmute Jim. That's no problem. Or if it's not Jim, whoever's account that's being used in Cardona. But do whatever you need and give it a try. I'll give you a couple more minutes because if this is the first time you're doing this, it takes a little bit. But it's a really intuitive interface. Students seem to have a pretty easy time using it. Um, I've seen a bunch of different grade levels use it, you know, third grade and up. I would be willing to say that you could See use it with the little kids as well. And then if you refresh the screen while you're waiting for us, mine isn't, <clears throat> mine isn't gonna tell you much because I was just talking while I was recording but you could click on Trish's or Janice's and you can hear what they had to say. All the struggles of the pandemic, I think this was the perfect And then to you could even comment back on other people's videos. Again, you have to log in. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'm gonna let everybody continue giving it a try. But now what I'd like to do is um, ask oh
first of all, to share a little bit about what did you maybe know about Flipgrid before you joined us? Share it a little bit. Has anybody else here, and I'll say unmute all, um, so you can feel free to unmute yourself. But what did you know about Flipgrid before you joined us today? Judy, go ahead. Um, I use this for as a from the parents' end, and um, what my son liked about it was that he got to see what his friends did. Also, he actually got to see a video of his friends doing the same thing. And that's that's where it really is very helpful. Um, you know, a lot of people have used this in English classes to hold discussions. Um, character analysis, like Trish, Trish was saying in a foreign language class, it's really good to be able to hear a student speak <clears throat> and be able to evaluate them. So Trish, um, what I'm going to do is ask you, you had offered to share a little bit about what, um, what it looked like from your point of view as a teacher. So screen share is available. And just so you know, Trish, right now we're just sharing this privately in Zoom. Oh, it's fine. So it is. Okay, because I was going to say, if you want to see it before I post it onto YouTube, just let me know and we can edit whatever. But I'm going to turn it over to you to walk us through from the teacher's perspective. Hi, everybody. Um, so here's one of my groups. So here's what I do now. I don't know if this is going to change, but I believe that before remote learning, when I was using this previously, I believe that you were only allowed one grid because I seem to remember I used to, when I used to do my Finde Samana, I used to have to go in, delete the ones from the, after I graded them, delete the ones from the week before and, and leave it blank for this week's group. Um, when, they, when remote learning started, they made it unlimited grids, or I think it, maybe it was two grids. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, I actually have more grids in my other account. So I'll switch over to that just so you can see more grids. So as you can see, I just logged in with my Google account. So it does interface with Google and Microsoft and whatever else. So that's great because you can just post, you can just, you know, you can just post a link when you do share, you know, you could just post a link in Google Classroom right there so that they see it right away. So here are some of my grids. These are my weekend reports from every week. Um, the actual categories are called grids, but you can create a topic within a grid. So these, when you look in here, these are all topics within a grid. So what I usually do is, if I was gonna do it this week, I would go to add new topic, And then I would put here. And then you did, like Anne was saying, you can change the length of time of the video if you think they need more time. Um, and then you're good to go. And then. Oh, and Trish, if you could point out, this is where video moderation is. Oh, right. Okay. So. If you click on that, you see that there's all different sorts of settings. You know, if you want them to only be visible to yourself or if you want them to be visible to the other students, like Ann was saying, they, they can comment, which I kind of like. They like that too. But, you know, for, there's all sorts of security things that, you know, measures you can take. And you can read through that on your own. And where that's helpful is if you ask the students to solve a math problem or describe something going on in science or social studies, each child could record their own answer without seeing what the other kids did first. And then you could make things public after the fact. Then 
you just cl click on create topic and that becomes a topic in your grid and here's your your link you can copy it i usually just go straight to google classroom and create an assignment whichever one of these you use and then they do theoretically what we just did they're going to click on the plus sign it looks a little bit different because we're on the setup end here and there's no grids um they'll have that big giant plus sign they just record a video um and then there you go you have a nice little you have a nice little topic within a grid of an assignment that you could scroll through if you've you know turned off the settings or whatever they won't see them but if you keep them open they'll see them they can put a little emoji on each person's you know video and it's it's real it's really great it's really great um i did run into a situation so my other school account i did run into a situation with those um, end of the year videos that we made for the, you know, going away videos that we made for the eighth graders. But then I went into my Google share drive, as you know, we all do and find things floating around that we didn't know we were supposed to grade. And I found a video that he had made. And I said, how could this gotta be, you know, how we all do as teachers, as computer teachers, whatever, we all sit there and go, there's gotta be a way, there's gotta be a way, there's gotta be a way, there's gotta be a way. So I did, I figured it out. So I went into actions and i added um if when i went into record a response if you click on these little lines right here it lets you it lets you add um so it does allow you i figured it out it does allow you to add a video clip and then i was able to upload it so that did work out there are ways to do that as well. So if, if a student tells you they can't get on Flipgrid, which like Ann said, it's, it has an app. It has, you can get on your iPad, your phone. I used to tell them, write them back and tell them that too. Try doing it on your phone. Try doing it on your phone. Um, and then it all ended up working out. That's basically it. These are the, you know, this is the grid that I have from my one school where I only teach computers. But as you can see on my other school, I teach Spanish. I've went many more grids. Um, and other than that, I mean, if you have any questions, you know, I'm happy to answer what I can. And then the other thing that I'd point out, if you look at Trisha's screen, you can see how many responses you have and then also how many views. So you can kind of get a feel for, you know, maybe who's, who's got an interesting response. You know, is it getting a lot of views? How many hours of shared learning? And I, when I looked at your other account, Trish, I, you had, it was a big number of, of hours of conversation where students were saying, um, you know, responding to you, but then listening and responding as well. So before we go on, so how do we record? So a uh, message I have to unmute. So Lucy, let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna see Lucy. So you still didn't get it to work, Lucy. So the way that you record, and I'll, I'll go through this again. So I'm going to Trish, uh, let's see if I can, I'm gonna stop your sharing. Yes, so I was just gonna ask you if you could do yep, that. Good. And so now if I go back to my screen share again, the way that you record is if you've downloaded the app or if you're looking at my grid, either way, you're always looking for that big green plus sign. And then once you hit that big green plus sign, you're looking on your screen to see if it says something about um, allow video, allow audio. And once that happens, when you get this um, log on, you have to choose Google or Microsoft, however you want to log on. You should get this little screen that allows you to begin recording by pressing that little red camera. Once you do recording from there, it's really just a matter of pre letting yourself talk. You can always redo things. And then it's that next, next, next button until it shows you that you're successful. Um, you don't have to take a selfie. Also, there's different filters. So one day I was um, working with a friend to show her how this works and I didn't feel like I was camera ready. So there's this little pixelate that you could do. Um, and then next. And then again, your name, your title and submit video. And I'm just gonna close that out. 
so even if you didn't get a chance to, I'm gonna close that out too, even if you didn't get a chance to try it yourself, this topic's gonna be open, so feel free to try it later when you have a little more time. And also, again, in the chat, I have the link to this grid, so feel free to go there at any time. You could listen to what these other teachers shared, so perhaps while you're, um, once you're done, you'll be able to listen to a couple of responses from teachers in the archdiocese who share at the high school level, at the um, pre-K level, and in between how they've shared their faith with students in our remote learning. Before we continue on, I'm going to turn it to you again in the, the participants room. What, um, what has this triggered any questions so far about possibilities? The other thing that's really good about uh, Flipgrid just as a tool, like, like Trisha and I were talking about, it was bought by Microsoft a few years ago. They just wanted it as a tool free for everybody. When Trish was talking about Google Classroom, you'll see this is when I first introduced it in, um, in the Archdiocese to the Technology Integration Specialists. So this is how it looks in Google Classroom. If you post it directly to Google Classroom, it just adds the link to the Flipgrid so that they can click there. Um, if you wanted to just have another grid to look at, let's see. The password was RCAN2017. Uh, let's try that one more time. 20, got to spell it right, 2017. So if you wanted to take another look at a little bit of a bigger flip grid, this was something that I shared with the technology integration specialists a few years ago. We were learning about something called the Triple E Framework. And the Triple E Framework is a, a way of looking at how you're integrating technology into your lessons. I'm just going to add a link to that as well if you've never heard about it. That's in and, my computer lab. So that must have been pre-work that you gave us <laughs> to try before. Like I saw my video and I'm like, that's my computer lab. Uh, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. It was pre-work for us getting together. So let's just see if I can grab that link. So if you just wanted to see another, um, another way that people did it, this was a pretty big um, grid of people explaining how they were using the Triple E framework. And you could see 4.2 hours of shared learning. So while not every technology integration specialist wanted to record their own as a practice, there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 grids here. We have about 67 educators who join us at the elementary level. So 167 views with 4.2 hours worth of shared learning. So sometimes students, you might put out a flip grid and you'll see that the hours of shared learning is really very high. It's because they're taking time to listen to each other speak about what they're learning. With Flipgrid, they have a lot of different tips and tricks. So if you're listening to this in an early childhood classroom and you're saying to yourself, you know, that's all good and fine for a high school student or, or a, um, a fifth grade student. I don't see how I could use it with a, a preschooler. If you look at the Flipgrid blog, it's blog.flipgrid.com. You could search for different ideas in different grade levels. They also have a number of different um, workshops that they run for free. And this is kind of a little bit slow right now. I'm trying to see if I can click over there. Now, with the preschool students, you would want to have a parent, probably, it's just the easiest thing, download Flipgrid to the phone or an iPad, and then they would help the child tap through. But again, I could see this Flipgrid being really helpful 
Fly Jim, thanks for joining us. I could see this Flipgrid being very helpful for um, just showing what you know. So if your preschool four students are uh, learning about letter sounds or numbers, they could give you a Flipgrid and they could talk about that. If you're working in kindergarten to third grade, for literacy, Flipgrid can be very helpful because it can allow the kids to read a book to you. And, you know, it's just, this is um, one little way that people were sharing how they were using the, the pre-K to eighth grade. So finish a story. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen again and just make sure that I'm not missing any thoughts or questions. I don't see any raised hands. I don't see anybody waving at me. So, um, you know, it's really a simple tool. Anne? Yeah. Okay, I have a question about the, the add topic bar. Can you drop a video in there that explains it at that point or is that only afterwards to comment? Oh, you could, you could do something like that as well. So let's talk about what Janice is asking. So if I go into my setup, uh, let's see where we are. So I'm going to go back to my flip grid. So if you wanted to explain something to the students and have them respond to it, or if you wanted to, to show something. So I'm going to log in again. Okay, so as Trish was saying, the lessons learned is a community I created today for us. ELA was a community that I created when I was showing a friend how to use it in middle school. So let's say that I am going to have um, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and I want a special grid just for the, the sixth graders. So I would say this is going to be my sixth grade class, and I'm going to have students create by using their Google school email. Now, if you're not a Microsoft or a Google school, you can, under the teacher account, create student IDs for your students and passwords for your students so you're not limited to um, the Google school email. You could change how you want this to read. So the Flipgrid for my sixth grade might just be Oro6. And then I'm gonna say next. Oh, and I'm gonna, I'll make this a, a school email for this example. And it's gonna be anybody at arcanschools.org will be able to use this. Okay, so now once you create your grid, they always give you a say hello topic. Generally, I don't use that, but it's a good way to keep um, that as an option if your students have never used Flipgrid before. It gives them something low key that they could just get and make sure that they can hit that green plus and do it correctly. If your kids don't need that, you can go here to actions and you can delete the topic. So let me do that. Just have to move something out of the way. So now let's, and I definitely want to permanently delete it. The reason you're doing that is if you have 30 videos, they don't want you to delete it too easily. So I'm going to say that I want to add a topic about um, solving equations. And then I'm going to say, please explain the process. I'm going to give them a really short amount of time. Sometimes, please explain the process to move a number to the other side of the equation because they can probably give me in 30 seconds that answer. I don't want the children to see each other's video and now I'm gonna record a video. So that's one way that you could do it, Janice. Okay. Um, if you had a video that you've already created on your hard drive, you can upload it. If you have an explanation video on YouTube, you could just select a YouTube and add it. So you do have three different options for a video that you could attach. Okay, uh, where would that go? Would that be right at the, the beginning of the topic or? The, it where would be at the beginning of the topic. So. Okay. Let's do this if I um, let's say YouTube 
um, set equations. And I don't care what I'm choosing. I'm just getting any video. So I'm going to grab that video. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go back to that creator. I'm going to add the video. Now I wouldn't want to give away the farm and explain to them what it is, but um, you know, you, you get the idea. I'm going to add that video. And now I'm going to create that topic. So if I go to this topic now, as a student, I'll log in. She's a sixth grader. So she would be able to play that YouTube video. And okay. then once she watched it, she would explain to me in 30 seconds, what's the process of moving a number to the other side of the equation. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for asking that, Janice. It is really a pretty easy tool to use. So for those of you who have never seen it before, oh, you missed what you said about parents downloading Flipgrid to the device. Uh, they do need to do that to use it. Um, if so, is anyone getting pushback from parents about having to download all these applications? So that's kind of a two-part question. Um, the, the parents could use it on a laptop. So if they have a laptop at home with a webcam, they could just do exactly what I did right now when I was showing you how I was using it. Um, as, a, as an app to download, it's, um, I haven't heard, and I'm gonna ask the whole room about this, I haven't heard really too much feedback from teachers or principals that parents were giving a lot of pushback for could you download this app or that. Um, I did not only because it's free. I think if it wasn't free, I would have gotten a lot, lot of pushback. I, there was some other things. Um, for example, the website ABC, uh, they have an app and a lot of the, the games that would be free on a computer on the, on the actual browser are not free on the app. And that was causing a lot of um, get epic if they didn't follow the directions and use the exact you know code that i had set up for that class and tried to do it on their own and find the books on their own that was a thing well it says we have to pay but i didn't get any pushback because it's a free app i don't know if that's different you know the play either one of my schools i didn't get any pushback on that and how about anybody else because i know some families asked uh parents to download class dojo or seesaw or some other apps has anybody else gotten pushback where a parent said, how many more things do you want me to download? You know what, Anne? I don't think it's a question about downloading. I think it's um, a question of the parents not knowing how to use the app themselves and having to help the younger children. So I was just texting uh, Lucy and I was thinking that perhaps we could talk to our tech people and it could be maybe one of the first lessons that they teach to the kids at the beginning of the year, how to use various apps. Thank you, Janice. And I don't know, Pat, Patricia, if that's what you're thinking about. What I am hearing from a lot of principals right now is that many are starting to think about creating a YouTube channel and creating playlists for parents on how to use different tools. Um, if your school isn't doing that, that might be something that you might consider doing yourself. And you don't have to create your own how-to videos. There's so many videos out on YouTube. But when you create a YouTube channel, it can be private so that it's just your families. If they get the link, they can see the list. Um, but you're right, Janice. One of the hardest things for the parents, especially the younger grade parents, is um, you saw yourself. You tried to use Flip, uh, yeah, Flipgrid for the first time at the beginning of our conversation. And if you've never seen something before, no matter how simple it is, it's scary and it's difficult. So uh, that would be something that I would strongly recommend to any of you. And if you need some help finding a useful video on how to, let me know. I could definitely share that with um, you what I find. Also, Janice uh, was asking me last week if I could create a couple of little tutorials on some of these tools that I spoke about over the last month with different teachers. So in July and August, I'm going to work on that as well. Thanks for clarifying that thought, uh, Janice. Thank you.
or may or maybe it could be part of back to school night you know we always sit in our rooms at back to school night and they go to their homeroom teachers many parents go to their homeroom teachers and don't stop it and see us maybe if you know the principal said something like and miss o'shea will be available in the computer lab if anybody wants any information on some of the apps we may if there is a in person back to school night um on some of the apps that were you know we might be that we may have used during remote learning stop by maybe she can show you you know so that could be a way to incorporate us as well absolutely and as you were saying to janice you know we we have really great technology teachers at the high school and the elementary level so that could be something that you'd want to have a conversation in august when you're back at the faculty meeting you know if we are face to face what would be some of the first things that you'd like to make sure your students know because some of you um, in the same school were using two or three different tools and so if you could talk to your tech integrator and your principal and let them know at your grade level if the least they could do would be sign on to google classroom open an assignment respond if the least they could do is open seesaw sign on respond it could give those targeted um, targeted ideas also i can't say enough too about the idea that if you're in the classroom yourself face to face take some time to bring in a set of chromebooks or a set of laptops or reserve time in the technology room so that you the teacher can see how it looks when your students are attempting an assignment that you tried maybe over this remote learning and just watch them and see where they're getting stuck because if you see that firsthand you may not have time to to go deeper but again the tech integration specialist you could say to them you know i noticed that when whenever they got to this point that's where they had trouble. And then the technology teacher can really just make sure that they help with that. You're welcome. And thank you, Trish, so much for sharing what you did. Yeah, of course. Good to hear. Um, is Trish a, a tech teacher? Yes. Okay, so, so here's the question. Um, Lucy and I are on the safety committee at our school. And mm -hmm. one of the things that came out of the CDC is that there are no shared devices that we're going to be able to use with the kids. So I think technology is going to be a little challenging when we go back. I mean, uh, in our school, uh, the lower grades, I'm in second grade, they have, um, we share iPads, we have iPad carts on floor. So there's just say, I think there's 60 uh, iPads per floor or something like that. There's not one for everyone. So grade level share them. So I don't know what that's going to look like. And of course, you know, in your computer lab, there's not, you know, what is that going to look like? I have, I work at two totally, at two different schools and I have two totally different situations. I have at one school, I have a lab a really functional PC lab, really nice PC lab. And we're just starting to get in dribs and drabs a few Chromebooks here and there. I don't know how I would do it. At that, my other school, I have more Chromebooks than I have PC. So we would be in better shape over there. It's really going to depend. I, I have no idea. It's really going to depend on what we're going to do. If I'm going to be standing there cleaning things while between classes, I have no idea. I don't and, know. Right. And it may end up being that it's it's in every other day thing so yeah. we're gonna have to look at what works best for every single school i know um janice at your school you not only have a big school but you have two different physical buildings mm -hmm. so it may be that if you're sharing devices it'll take some planning ahead i know john um, mason is a really great tech integrator and computer teacher so he might only have one class in the morning and one class in the afternoon with cleaning devices in between. He may push into your classroom. I mean, every school is going to be approaching it differently. So as you're brainstorming things, um, if you and the principal and John, you know, want to share what you're thinking and, and bounce some ideas around, let me know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, just end this with one extra thing that I found this morning. If you are a Flipgrid user, um, what they are going to be doing this month is bringing out some new options and opportunities. I've met many of you on Zoom over the past several weeks and even several months. So if you haven't seen these links before, feel free to do a screen capture, take a photo of the screen. I have a YouTube channel. The easiest way to get to it is to go to tinyurl.com slash YouTube. I have all of the remote learning sessions that I did from March through June up there. Uh, there's a lot that I'm backlogged on, so that's my job in July is to really edit the videos that I haven't and post them there. So that's going to keep growing. Also, we have an early childhood and an all teacher Facebook group. So the groups are pretty big. There's, um, I think, over 100 in one group and close to 100 in another. So that's a great way over the course of the summer to, as you're thinking about things, post a question, see what other people are doing. As I find free learning opportunities, I post them there as well. Uh, I don't think there's any principals or high school admins on the call, but there's a group for them.